original question. So at that time, uh, the, what you're saying is, is that what happened in terms of taking those funds, in terms of moving the funds around with the uh, Democratic Congressional Committee and going back and forth with that, since it was operating within the law, right, then operating just inside the law is okay if the end result is, is that you're going to end up doing good things. So that, to me, is part of your definition of what that means in terms of ethical behavior. We have, you guys got a second? I'd like to take you on a walk through history. Can we do that? <laughs> <laughs> we have a very We also each have 15 okay. minutes. So let me, maybe we'll have a chance to be able to. Well, walk I just, well, let me, well, okay. <laughs> well, let me tell you one second. We have to understand the way the accomplishments in American history have happened because you recognize that unfortunately it, it, the politics is the means to do good government. We have the nation's capital in Washington, D.C. today. You know why? Because Thomas Jefferson and Alexander Hamilton, and they hated each other like Madigan and I did. They cut a political deal. Hamilton got Jefferson to put Democratic votes on an assumption, uh, the federal government assuming state debts. In exchange for those votes, Hamilton put Federalist votes on Jefferson's desire for a capital in Washington, D.C. The end result was a political deal, but the result was good for the people of the country. I give you more examples. Obviously, uh, if I was given that choice today, uh, I would support Harold Washington. In fact, if you look at my policies when I became governor, he was the sort of thing that Washington would have applauded. I don't know if Bill Lake would have been against it. He'd have been a Madigan, Cullerton, you know, political machine kind of guy. So he probably wouldn't have supported that. But let me explain the Bill Lake situation. And his name was Fast Eddie, that's what they called him. Uh, I knew him. I, he, uh, I met him because he, he and I have a common ethnic background. And yeah, I went to Northwestern, but you know, my parents, my mother was a ticket agent for the CTA, my dad was a factory worker. We didn't know anybody. And uh, and through a mutual relationship in the Yugoslavia and the East Croatian and I'm Serbian, uh, I was introduced to him, and he was able to help me get a summer job in the Corporations Council's office in the city of Chicago. And I felt that was a nice personal thing he did for me. And, uh, and then he asked me to come and work for him in his law firm after uh, I got out of law school, and I was flattered by that. Uh, it turned out when it came to that offer, fast that he pulled a fast one on me because he just bullshitted me. There was no job. Uh, but I thought that he did me that favor in the Corporation Council's office, and he was running, and, and, and I just felt I should, if I could, I, I could help him out. And I, what I did was, I represented a, a minister of an African-American church on the South Side, and I was able to give him a chance to speak to him. So, uh, so you had no sense at that time that, that, he was, that he was tainted, that he was corrupt? Look, it, it, he wasn't corrupt until just now. He was like guilty to something. Well, no, 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 no. He's, he's been corrupt. <laughs> 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 It's a conclusion of a lot of people yeah. uh, in this city. This is, I understand that, you know, but here again, Professor, with all due respect, you're going to call him corrupt because he's got a certain reputation. And I'm not saying he was the kind of guy that, you know, was reforming or doing the right sorts of things. He was an inside guy, quintessentially so. And he would he'd be very much at home with that system I fought in Springfield. I don't disagree with any of that. But if you're saying corrupt in a moral sense, you might be right. But if you're saying corrupt in a legal sense, he was not until he just now recently evidently did some things that admitted to in, in 19, let's let's yeah. jump forward a okay. little bit here. You had your picture taken with politicians who had intrigued you, Richard Nixon. And most <laughs> most saw Nixon through the actions of the people he surrounded himself with, and who brought his presidency down. Mitchell, Haldeman, Dean, Liddy, Errol, and just to name a few, were either indicted or convicted. History's come to confirm what we all know at the time, which is that he was corrupt as evidence in the people he surrounded himself with. The irony of this is that your political career has some similarities to Nixon's in that you chose to surround yourself with people who have since been indicted or convicted. And we, we know a lot of familiar names, Russell, Levine, Monk, just to name a few. Thirteen were indicted in Operation Board Games by U.S. Attorney Fitzgerald, most of whom were close to you or your campaign in one way or another. So my question to you is, whether you're found innocent or guilty, how do you explain to the students here your association with so many people who in the end were corrupt? Well, let me, let me run with that. That's a valid question. There's not a lot of people. people. You mentioned Tony Resco. You're right about Tony Resco. I misunderstood Tony Resco. I misread Tony Resco. So did President Obama. And when you talk about my association, that brief association with Bredoliak, I mean, President Obama and I saw Tony Resco and we thought he was an honest businessman. He, I was convinced and he assured me he had no business interest with the state of Illinois. I never knew he was the person he turned out to be, nor did President Obama, I'm sure. 
Uh, in fact, uh, you know, there was a highly publicized situation where he helped President Obama buy a lot of land next to his house in Hyde Park. I'm sure the president didn't know it, just as I didn't know it. So yeah, we make some of his judgment. That's inevitable in this business. The question is, what do you do when you learn about those things? And when we learned that there were some issues, you know, we made the appropriate adjustments, and everything I did was with the advice of lawyers uh, to make sure that I operated appropriately. Uh, with regard to you know some others who were close to me, how are you supposed to know that someone was looking for you was doing some things that are you know that for example, um, I can't talk about the facts of the case, but how are you supposed to know that you have somebody who's taking bribes? And when you take bribes by definition, taking cash, that's a secretive kind of thing. You don't disclose those sorts of things. So when you learn about it, you appropriately add to the adjustments. And all I can tell you is that uh, if you look at any administration of, in any kind of high place, unfortunately. James Madison wrote this in the 10th Federal Papers. Mm -hmm. If men were angels, there'd be no need for govern governments. Unfortunately, no. <laughs> 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 that's what I'm to say, but the reality is you do the best you can and you try to build a system to protect that. I put an independent inspector general in place. I put one in place to monitor my own administration. And when I learned that there were some issues with Tony Resco, I directed my chief of staff to take him to the inspector general's office. I, I, I have a close position, and I'm going to talk, and I have some questions, but I, I just did want to make a comment. I mean, there's no repeal beyond Resco, yeah. and some of these people who you knew for a long time, so I, I'm not necessarily, I, I buy all this, but thank you. <laughs>